So this is the design I decided on with my uh, my one shelf. And so now I'm going to have to go back and save this. So we didn't do this in the last one. And I am going to save this as an assembly file. So this is going to actually be a sub-assembly. It's an assembly that goes inside of a larger assembly. And I'm just going to call this shelf. Select save. Click OK. And now back in our main assembly, remember we have things hidden in here. Um, we're going to select place. And there should be just one here called shelf. Open that up. Set it off to one side. It comes in upside down. That's okay. We'll fix that in a bit. Okay. Now, one problem with this shelf is that if I were to put in this box, it just drops straight down to the bottom. There's no reason why I'm going to make this visible again. That bothers me. Okay. There's no reason why it would stay up here. Uh, and that's all this wasted space that we're creating down underneath. We're making a shelf for no good reason other than just to have something to pull out. So let's fix that. We're going to make an extra piece to so go across this back wall here and that'll be something that the edges of this will sit on top of that will keep it elevated so we can still have a space under here that we can place stuff on. Alright, and so to do that we're just going to go to a new part file, make a 2D sketch, click on here, and we'll start off with just a rectangle. We don't need this to be very big, so if we go to dimension, let's make this one inch tall. Actually, let's go smaller. Let's go 0.5, half inch tall. And I'm going to go back to the jewelry box and try and figure out from this how high up it should be and how wide it should be. Uh, so let's get the width one first. I'm going to click on just this edge so I can kind of see from here to here and go to inspect distance. So we have our virtual ruler from point A to point B. Looks like it's seven inches. Let's go back to part two. Dimension. Let's make that a seven. Finish your sketch, extrude, and instead of a quarter of an inch, let's say 0 0.125. It's an eighth of an inch. And let's change the wood type of this to cherry. I'll match the rest of our box. Save. We'll call this shelf support. All right, so let's go back to our jewelry box. And we need this flipped around a little bit. So how about we go to assemble, constrain, and I'm just gonna mate this face to this face over here. Select apply. And we're gonna start by mating these two faces together. I'm going to look at the right side view and see what this looks like. Alright, I'm going to actually leave some of this out because that will give me a good idea as to what I want as well. I'm going to offset this and I could just kind of guess and check. Say 2. Actually 2 looks about perfect. But I should probably measure as well. So let me stick with 2 for now. I'm going to say apply close out of this. And I would like to see how tall this piece is. So that's one and a half inches. And also how far from the inside of the slid to the bottom corner.
looks like it's three and a half inches. I'm going to try and measure this one more time to where I can actually see the bottom corner here. Yep, three and a half. So two inches was perfect. That's what we wanted. We're going to go back to assemble, select constraint again, and this time I can click on this face. It's the easiest one to get to. And on this inside face here, and that should be set to mate. All right, and now we're going to slide in some supports underneath this. So I'm going to click on place, and I have shelf support. I have two of them one for each side and I may have to make some of this stuff invisible but not right away I am going to make a constraint mating this face to this back surface of the box. Select apply. And I don't know if that just worked like I wanted it to work. Let's click on this and see what we did. It didn't look like it applied that. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, so that one's definitely applied. I'm also going to make a mate constraint with this face, with the inside of this box. All right, starting to get a little bit harder to see what's going on. So the last thing we're going to do. So we have to make a couple things invisible just so we can have an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to uncheck visibility. And that takes our entire subassembly out of it temporarily. Here it is here. It says shelf. All right. And I am going to mate the top of this shelf support I want to make it to the top of this so I'm going to hit cancel I'm going to uncheck visibility for this trim piece here alright let's try this one more time I'm going to make this piece to this piece and instead of hitting apply right away I know I want an offset of 1.5 that should be a flush not a mate and it should have been negative 1.5 so let's go back and change that as well so right down here it shows up go all the way to one end type in a negative sign and click enter okay I want to do the same thing on the other side so there actually is going to be a piece here uh, that's our 8 inch side so if I right click on it go down to visibility and check visibility it'll put that back into where we can see it let's look back on here and constrain we're gonna glue the face of this onto the face of our box select apply if I were to drag this out so we can see it we can say constrain one of these faces onto this face and select apply 
and now instead of making this invisible I'm just going to make a flush constraint with the top of this and the top of this and select apply so now on either side we have a support it's going to be the same height on either side so give us a way that we can set the shelf in place and it has something to sit on top of let's put the piece of trim back on so right click on that shaded box and select visibility let's see what the shelf looks like back in place there's that well, turn this off for just a second so we can see what's going on there's our support there's our shelf shelf is sitting right on top of the support so it's looking pretty good and make this visible again there's our lid make your 8 inch side visible again and there's your box so this is everything we need to make the box all we have to do now is to make the drawings for it and that'll be the next video